Aloha and good day, friends, yogis. I'm Nicole Spirit. Today in the house we have Puka Dog, Puppy Finn. Hope you're feeling good today. Our class is all about Leo and the lions and the Lion's Gate portal. What is that? Uh, it is the date in August known as 8-8, and it's said to be when the energy of the lion and the Leo constellation come to a full-blown energy of manifestation for us. That's how I'm going to describe it. So thank you so much for joining. Let's start our class in a comfortable outfit, hopefully on a yoga mat or somewhere where you're super cozy, and we're going to go down to child's pose to begin the class. So you can have your knees together or open. We're going to just start seated and then lower the upper body down. You've got some variations with your upper body, your arms. You can stretch your arms out long. You can stack your fists and rest your forehead. And right now, just taking a few deep breaths and checking in with everything. Checking in with your mind, checking in with your emotions, and checking in with your physical body. So let's take two more breaths here and just really spend some time exploring, maybe heart to earth. Your heart is coming closer to the ground, or maybe you're a little more lifted and maybe you're pressing into that third eye and feeling a little bit of introspection, a little bit of insight and intuition, our psychic powers getting tuned up and tuned in. So what's happening right now with the breath? Let's see if we can deepen the breath. One long, smooth breath here, about seven counts on the inhale. Seven counts on the exhale. Good. And then ever so gently, we'll release the hands. We'll start to walk the hands forwards, lift the hips, bring the knees right under your hip points. Your arms are right under your shoulder points. And we're just going to let life in the spine. See how that feels to send our head long, to send our tail long, flat spine. And then we're going to tune into our tabletop. So Going from tabletop to cat cow, we're going to lift the spine. I love to come up on the fingertips as well. You might even try this little variation. You curl your toes under and lean back. This is called rocket cat. Good. And then come back to flat hands, release your feet, and bring your belly down. Come into cow pose. Lift your head, lift your hips. And just be here for a breath or two. I want you to just feel your spine in this position. Notice how it feels. Be like a lion. Be like a tiger that walks on all fours or like a dog. And then we're going to come back to cat, rounding the spine. Again, take the variation if you like of propping on the fingertips, maybe curling the toes and leaning back. Just trying something different, kind of cool. And especially with this Leo season upon us, the energy of the lion coming into that space where we feel super strong. Coming back to your hands, coming back to your knees, we're going to flip off the toes and we're going to come onto the balls of our feet. So finding Malasana for a couple of moments, see how this feels. You can even open from side to side in the hips. And remember, you've got a couple of options too with the hands. You can bring your hands to touch at the heart center, bringing the elbows perhaps into the knees a little bit and see how this feels. If it's too much to be flat on your feet, maybe you lift up onto the balls of your feet and just hang out. So I'm going to lower my heels down and I want to do a little exercise where watch if you're slouching, really try to project and sit up nice and tall. Get the doggies a tiny bit closer because they're so darn cute. And then we're going to push the knees wide open, and then we're going to bring the elbows back together. So opening the hips here a couple more times. Just see how this feels. Super deep in the hips. I'm wearing unicorn pants today, so anything is possible. Good. And then we're going to release our hands down. We're going to bring the back side of the body up. Coming into forward fold, Uttanasana, and then we can guide our feet so that they're facing forwards. So we have options here as well. We can keep our knees bent, let the upper body really hang and dangle, or we can straighten our legs a little bit, maybe even walk our feet a little bit closer together. 
I like having the knees always just a little bit bent. Head is below the heart, getting bathed with endorphins and feel good energy. And I want you to think about a lion. I want you to think about a big tiger and these big cats in the jungle and how they are considered the king or queen of the jungle. Then we're gonna roll up to standing. Keep your breath nice and smooth. See how you're feeling today. Adjust all your bits. We want the lion and the tiger to look pretty nice when they're doing what they're doing. And then we're gonna to come to Tadasana Mountain Pose. So standing with your feet either hip width apart or as close as touching, we'll bring our hands to our heart. And we're just gonna hang out in this beautiful Anjali Mudra. This is a hand position where the hands align at the heart and we feel a sense of focus, we feel a sense of grounding, a sense of our own alignment, body, breath, and mind. Let's take one more breath here. We're in the standing pose, Tadasana, our mountain pose, and we're happy. <laughs> All right, let's bring the arms out to the sides. We're gonna try some squats today. We're gonna really think about a lion evoking that lion's roar as we exhale. So this is where we step our feet about one leg length apart, maybe just slightly less. In Qigong, this is called the Mabu stance or horse stance. So bend the knees a little bit. Now, if you want to, we can try this lion's breath with our squats. We're gonna inhale, and on the exhale, when we come up, we're gonna stick the tongue out of the mouth, and we're gonna look at our third eye, all right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So come down with the inhale, and then the exhale, <sighs> lion's roar. <sighs> I like a variation too, including the arms. So I bring the arms down on the inhale and then up on the exhale. <sighs> if you find this breath too intense, just do some squats. Last four. Hands back to the heart. Straighten your legs. I'm definitely feeling some warmth and heat between the legs. You feeling it there too? <laughs> All right, float the feet so that they're facing forwards. And then we're gonna step just a little bit further apart. So getting nice and wide for our warrior two. Arms are gonna be at the sides. We're gonna turn our right foot out 90 degrees, same direction as the fingers. We're gonna catch our breath. <laughs> then we're gonna look over the right extended arm, big inhale breath and exhale, sink down, bend your knee, sink your shoulders down. A little trick I like is to bring the right arm on a 45 degree angle to the body then pull it in so the shoulder socket is all nice and tight and close to the body and then release that arm back out to the side how's your core doing do up your energetic zipper bring your navel in towards your spine and breathe one more breath here good extended side angle now bend your elbow place it on the right knee Right elbow, right knee, and then left arm. Hand can stay at the side, hand on the hip, or arm up overhead. So I want you to think about being super strong. I want you to feel like that energy of resolve and strength and joie de vivre, joy for life, is inside, and sometimes we need to turn it on. One more breath. Let's hang out here, or bring our hand down, or keep your other arm down, or take a bind. So you have to reach your right arm under your right knee, your left arm behind you, and in a perfect world, your hands clasp. Good, now release, we're gonna stand up nice and strong, strong, charge up that front leg, and come to a nice triangle legs, triangle arms, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, we're gonna bump the hips to the left, lean over that right leg with your right arm, and then gently project from your waist, from your core, that you're lowering that right arm down and that left arm up. Feel those strong legs. It should feel really good. And breathe. You can look up, you can look out to the side or down. 
And you get that sense of that like strong inner power, your strong inner life force energy. Now charge up through the legs, come back up to standing, and then we'll release down. Good. Turn your right toes in, and your left toes will turn out. And we just take a moment to really find our nice grounded standing balance pose in Virabhadrasana legs. So we've got our toes on the left pointing out, we've got our arms out to the sides, and let's do that little thing where we bring our arm out 45 degree angle, left arm, bring it back into the shoulder, then release it out. Big inhale breath, look out past your left fingers, and then exhale, bend through that left knee. So you can do a little bounce here, you can really find your place, you can do a twist, that's kind of weird. Don't worry, you don't have to do that. You can do some crunches. You can bring your hands behind your head and see how it would feel to activate that core. The main thing is really just getting a sense of feeling strong, feeling grounded, feeling like you can do anything, like your inner lion, your inner tiger is coming to the surface. Good, last breath here. Shoulders are down, project energy out your fingers, go all the way around the earth, come back in your other fingers, stay majestic. Take your left elbow, place it on the left knee now, extended side angle. So we've got some options here too. This is a good place to rest. It's like, oh good, I can rest my elbow, I feel strong, right arm is at the side, we can bring it up overhead. Keep that nice engagement through the core, the belly zipped in, and then other option is right hand on the hip. Another variation is to release that left hand to the ground, and if you've never taken a bind, it's, I don't say that hard or anything, it's just kind of neat if you've never tried it. Only if you're feeling strong today, you take that left arm, bring it right underneath you, kind of touch your bum, and then take your right arm, bend at the elbow, and with any luck, your hands align, and they actually clasp. One more breath, strong through the core, keep that engagement. Wherever you are, please take one option today that works for you, and on the next breath, strong legs, strong core, and we're gonna windmill the arms up, come back to straight legs, nice standing posture, good. I'm starting to breathe a little heavier, these are hard things we're doing, so way to go. This is evoking some really beautiful, passionate, lioness, and fiery tiger energy. Shoulders down, gonna keep that knee straight, we're gonna do triangle, trikonasana next, Bump your hips a little to the right. Draw your left arm over like somebody's pulling your wrist or hand, and then lower down. Again, using your core to totally control what's happening in this pose. Right arm can stay up, or option again, hand on the hip. Left hand can rest on your leg or right in front. See how that's feeling today. And breathe. One last breath here. Both legs are strong. Good, and then we're gonna charge up through the core, come back up to standing, lower your arms down, left foot turns in, and keep your breath going nice and strong. So the next thing we're gonna do is speeder pose, spider. I made it sound like a speeder, because it's kind of cutie and funny. Every time we find a spider in the house that we feel like we need to relocate outside, we give it a name, so <clears throat> there's a lot of spider knee coals out there. <laughs> And a reminder that Spider is here to teach us how to weave our own web. Please lie down. So I will lie on Puka's face. <laughs> right, we're gonna lower down through the upper body. We're gonna prop up on the balls of the feet. Can you see anything I'm doing here? And then we're gonna lower the head and we're gonna cross the hands so that they're right on your dog's booty. Just joking. They're right underneath you, under your chest. And you're going to let your head hang. Sorry for that, was me. She doesn't like this one spot in her foot being touched, so she gave a little growl. The reminder of the spider is that it can do anything in life. Another option for spider is to bring your hands behind your ankles. So your fingers are propped up. See how this feels. This is intense. Only if you're feeling it today. Okay, bring your hands back forward. Drop your heels down. We're gonna roll the body up to standing. We're gonna take our arms up overhead and we're gonna do the Qigong move known as the elephant swings its trunk. So we inhale, we roll down, flat back. 
Exhale, bend your knees and roll back up to standing. Straighten the legs again. Inhale, forwards. And exhale and roll back. We're on an African lion safari. Seeing the elephants, the lions, the tigers. Two more times. Inhale, forwards. Bend the knees, roll it back up. Big inhale, breath forwards. Bend the knees and exhale and roll it back up. Good, release your arms by your sides. We're going to now do tree vrikshasana, so strong tree. Again, you need to have strong resilience in your core to be able to do this. So first we're gonna have our left leg is standing leg. Our right foot is on the ground. Find your breath. Smile, notice if there's any mental chatter, and just see if we can focus on the breath for our class. And then also we can bring that focus on the breath to whenever we need it in life. We're gonna do standing one leg tadasana, so it means you're gonna balance on your left leg. Bring your right foot up. So one thing you can do here, circle around at the ankle joint, go one way, go the other. If your foot is not comfortable, Balancing in the sky, bring your toes down, and you can do that circle on the ground. Good, last breath, see if you can hold in one leg, Tadasana. Now, tree pose, Vrkshasana. Bring your right foot to the floor. You can bring your right foot to the calf. You can bring your knee up, just like standing one leg at Tadasana, and then gently guide your foot into your thigh. See how that feels. Two points of contact. Nice and strong. If you're looking at something not moving, your hands can be in Anjali Mudra at the sides. If you're comfortable and it's available, bring the arms up, drop your shoulders down. If you know me, you know I like to do humble tree as well, which means close your eyes for even one second. Maybe we can hold for three seconds, closing our eyes, finding that internal gaze, that balance, that drishti. Good, and when you're ready, hands back to heart. With control and energy, release your leg. Don't just let it down. So nicely, gradually let it down. Now, I want you to try something else today that you maybe never tried before. Bring that right leg up and take your fingers around your big toe. I'm still learning this, so I try it a couple times a week. Now, this might be your standing pose. This is very challenging. The ultimate goal is to do this. Yes. So it takes some practice if this is your first moment ever trying it. Maybe do it against the wall. Maybe you get good at doing this part and release that right leg. I'm like, did you notice? I wasn't quite balancing, but I'm getting there. Holding poses for beginners three to five seconds. Right leg is standing leg now. Get nice and grounded. Left leg lifts up. So pause here, find your balance, circle at the ankle one way or the other. Good, and then see how that feels. The other option, of course, leave your toes on the floor. And breathe. Are you having fun yet? I'm having fun. Thank you for joining. I love you so much. This is really cool. <laughs> I've got unicorns and crystals and roses on my pants, so it's a good day. And the shirt says love. All right, standing Tadasana, one leg Tadasana. Now let's find the Vrikshasana tree. Foot can come onto the calf, avoid the knee. If you do come up to the thigh, you can always, of course, guide your foot up to the thigh. Notice that you need to have that strong core and strong leg so that your leg will hold. Left leg pushes into the right thigh if you've come up that high. If not, choose a spot that you can hold and you can manage. If you find yourself challenged to balance, then it means you're doing it right. It means you're actually like getting your brain to focus and think about different things. If it's available, remember you've got options. Another variation for hands is also to have them clasped together. I like temple mudra. The last three fingers interlace, thumb and index pointing up. One more breath. And if it's available, humble tree. What's your tree today? Write it in the comments. Close your eyes and see if you can hold for three, three seconds in humble tree. And if you're falling and moving, that's beautiful. That means your brain is calculating how to find more balance. Beautiful. And is so perplexed. He's like, why won't you just let me out? All right, now we're going to try that one leg extension. So first thing you do is release the tree. By the way, today I'm a willow. And then we're going to draw that left knee in and up. So again, engage the core, 
Maybe you just do this and that's super wonderful. Maybe you see how it would feel to do this. Maybe we see how it feels to do this. Okay, beautiful. It takes time, but it's good for us to have our brain to be challenged by different things. When you're ready, release. See if you can hold for one more breath. I also like this one being called Flamingo. And then we release that left leg down. Good, amazing. Release your arms. Start to shake and bounce. Shake the tree. I learned this one as shake the tree. It's also called shaking. It's a qigong move. Qi means energy, gong means skills. So I'm realizing that qigong is basically Chinese yoga. <laughs> All right, shake your tree, bounce in the heels, let go of any debris or detritus, let go of your dead leaves, let go of your flowers that have bloomed and dried out. Good, and then we pause. Now the last thing I wanna do is just feel your energy between your hands, feel your chi, your prana, your life force. So we're gonna rub our hands together. We're gonna open and close the hands, just really feeling some energy, almost like a magnetic and energetic thickness between our hands. That sounds kind of weird, but it's almost like the hands are getting pushed away magnetically. A really cool thing you can do is access what's called Lao Gong, which is an acupressure point center of your palm. Press it two or three times, one hand. Press it two or two, three times the other hand. And just for the healers, for the people who are doing all this magical energy work, this is a really beautiful point to access for increasing healing energy. Good. So then rub our hands together again. Good. We're going to rub our hands together. And then create a ball of energy. down. You let out the tiniest little grumble, did you hear? Okay, and feel your energy, feel your energy. Let it get a little bit bigger and smaller. Good. Breathe, have fun, enjoy what you're doing. Just feel your chi, feel your energy. And then we're gonna do one qigong flow move known as compressing the pearl. So we start with our hands in front of our belly we're visualizing, imagining that chi field, that energy ball between our hands. And we're simply gonna raise our arms up on an inhale breath. And then bring them back together. So your palms are gonna face each other as they come forwards. As they open, they're gonna face forwards. Inhale, and then exhale. Now you might not feel anything right now, and that's okay, you might feel so much, and it's, Cool. Whatever you're going through, just be aware, notice, enjoy. So it's like we've got our energy field and it's represented as this ball between our hands and as we increase or in expand and inhale, that pearl, that energetic body increases. As we exhale, it gets smaller. We condense it right back in front of our elixir field, our energy bank account in front of our belly. Let's do two more. Inhale, we stand up just a hint taller. Exhale, we sink just a little bit. Let your belly come into your spine. Let your tailbone sink just a little bit. Last one. And then we'll end with the mudra known as Buddha holds the pearl. So bringing your feet together and bringing the hands, one hand fits in the other, and then we bring our thumbs together. And just let your hands rest at your lower dantian or at your gem field in the belly. And we imagine that this beautiful condensed energy, this pearl of all of the magic in our whole existence and all of existence is condensed in this little space in our hands that's then reflected in our belly. Just be like a beautiful crystal on the side of a mountain with the sun shining on it and feel that strength and that light and that love that is coming from within, that remembrance. And see if there is any sort of activation for you during this so-called lion's gate, during the energy of the 
big beautiful cats on the planet that are said to be our royalty, our brothers and sisters. And think about how animals communicate, it's telepathic. How we communicate with them, it's usually telepathic. So get good at that. It's really an amazing, beautiful psychic skill that we have right now. And I'm telepathically sending you a message right now. There you go. So now we're going to finish off with crystal on the side of the mountain. Float your hands so that they're interlaced at the thumbs over that Dantian energy. This is also called bamboo in the wind. And just be here for a couple of moments where your body regulates. It sends the energy where it wants to go. There was a beautiful dog sleeping pose that Puka and Finn took a couple of years ago and they were sleeping like a yin and yang symbol. They looked like a beautiful black and tiger dog curled up together in one ball looking like the Tai Chi or the yin yang symbol that we know, the white and the black with the two white and black dots. One more breath. Maybe you smile a little. Maybe you return to that infinite place of calm and power and stillness within you and you stay rooted and grounded knowing that you are always capable of returning to that still place with a conscious breath anytime you wish. I'm finishing with one of my favorite quotes by the Dalai Lama, do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. Let's circle the hands at the belly clockwise if you can think which direction that is. And then we're gonna let our hands go with a sigh. I wish you a wonderful day. I wish you an amazing sleep tonight. Be good to each other, be good to yourself. And let's float the hands to the heart. I love you. Take care, my kittens. See you next time.